All right, guys, so the start of the Green Bay Packers offseason program has officially begun this week. OTA started yesterday, but today's OTA session was open to the media. There's also an OTA on May 23rd, then they continue on May 28th through the 29th, May 31st, and then also June 3rd, June 4th, and June 6th. Then after that, mandatory minicamp is on June 11th through the 13th. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at all the highlights from the Green Bay Packers first OTA session that's open to the media. And if that sort of thing does interest you, you'll find everything Green Bay Packers on this channel. I'll be posting highlights as well as updates for every OTA that's open to the media right here on this channel. So I'll also be posting a video a little bit later today going over what happened during the 7v7s and the 11v11. So they can't film during those sessions. I really wish they could we see all the other teams posting clips of an actual you know one-on-one -on -one situation with a wide receiver and a new defensive back or something like that I hate when I see that from other teams because the Packers never post that sort of thing so unfortunately all we get is some highlights from the warm-ups but still nonetheless it's fun to start to see all the new players or some players returning how they're looking in this new season so let's dive right into it so first and foremost I wanted to go over this clip and you'll see who it is in a second that is JJ and Agbari practicing. Um, <laughs> this is still insane because we all thought he had a torn ACL, but that isn't the case. JJ and Agbari did not have a complete tear of his ACL. I believe it was only a partial tear. And we actually learned this, uh, I think, right before the draft. And then, and then the Packers, you know, didn't draft a single edge in that draft class. And it kind of made sense. Why? Because Enigbari is seemingly healthy which is still wild because we all expected Enigbari to be out to like mid-November which he would have been if that indeed was a fully torn ACL I mean you see him here running this drill and he looks good he looks like there's there's no issue there he's not even wearing a knee sleeve or a knee brace like it looks like this guy never had an issue with his knee which is absolutely crazy and it's a great thing for this Packers defense because they're going to need that depth in that edge room you know you already have Preston Smith Rashawn Gary um, Lucas Van Ness even adding Brenton Cox into that into that list there but you need more right you always needed more and that was a concern with Inagbari's injury but he seems healthy in this clip we get our first look of 2024 Jordan Love throwing to Romeo Dobbs on a deep stop route here we have a lot of clips of Jordan Love throwing um, in today's OT session Romeo Dobbs looking good on this route nice hands you know getting it down to his body getting up field again these are unpadded practices so only helmet and then a jersey and pants so you, you can't take too much away from this but it's still again nice to see these players moving around uh, you can see some players that you know seemingly gained muscle or seem quicker like Christian Watson which we do have some clips from but a nice little connection here Jordan loved Romeo Dobbs you know they were a consistent uh, pair in 2023 and speaking of Christian Watson here's a clip of him it's going to be Jordan Love throwing him into basically a, a drag route that turns into a, a drag stop um, here and there's more clips of Christian Watson but you know we know he saw a soft tissue expert in Madison this offseason to kind of get to the roots of why he keeps getting hamstring inj injuries. And uh, judging by the limited clips we have from today, he looks really good. Um, he looks like there's no issue with his hamstring or any soft tissue. Now, of course, you got to go through the entire offseason. And, of course, when the actual playtime starts, when preseason training camp and all that, that'll be a big telltale sign of if he can last through all of that. Um, but he does look really good here. Here's a clip of Jordan Love throwing a, a deep corner route to Jaden Reed. And I have another angle of this, uh, but just quickly wanted to show you the throw by Jordan Love. Nice right over the shoulder in stride there and here's a clip of it an angle from Jaden Reed's perspective and man just watching Jaden Reed how fluid he is with his cuts man it's just it's just a pleasure to watch because something I enjoy the most is watching wide receivers work because I really enjoy breaking down tape of wide receivers um, I've played it myself and I really like the intricacies that goes into playing the position of wide receiver and just his simple cuts as simple as that may look it's harder than it looks. It's harder to be that fluid with your cuts. You're not raising or dropping your pad level too much, you know, showing the DB where you're going. J.D. Reed is just so quick with it. He's so fast with it, and it's why he had such a great rookie season and why he's going to have a great sophomore season as well. He knows how to get open. He can catch the ball, and he can create after he has the ball in his hands. Very excited for year two of Jaden Reed. Here's another clip of Christian Watson, and man, he looks super explosive. You know, on this deep stop route, you, it's really nice to see him break down very hard on that stop route and kind of explode back towards the ball um, because, again, he's had so many soft tissue injuries in his legs, and they don't look like any bit of a problem. 
problem right here. As I said earlier, this is still very early. It's pretty much his first practice of 2024. At least that's open to the media that we can see. Um, they did practice yesterday, so that's a good sign as well. You know, Watson practiced yesterday, practiced today, and still looks just as explosive today um, here on this deep stop route. It's just so important for this guy to stay healthy in 2024. Like, if Christian Watson can stay healthy and continue to build on what he can do when he is healthy, man, he can be a very good wide receiver in this league. Here's another clip of Christian Watson kind of running a deep slant, getting a pass from, I believe, Michael Pratt. And I, I know this happened a lot last offseason where we were, we were looking at the clips without the pads through OTAs, through minicamp and whatnot, and we were saying, man, Christian Watson looks even faster, more explosive, um, looks better on his breaks, on his routes, which that looks really good is there, there as well. And all of that is true. But as I said, he just needs to stay healthy, and I'm really hoping he can. And the specialist he sought out in, in Madison this offseason, I'm really hoping does help him. Here we have a clip of Jordan Love throwing a dig route to Grant DeBose, kind of a receiver we haven't talked about a lot. And honestly, he looks lighter. He looks a lot lighter than whatever he was at last year, at least from what I remember when I was watching his clips last year. He looks faster. He looks lighter, which is great Like to see another guy that is still in the competition for, say, wide receiver six, you know, between him and Malik Heath. I would say Bo Melton is that wide receiver five, uh, but this guy could still fight, right? This guy could still fight for a roster spot because it's not a given to Malik Heath by any means, or even Bo Melton. I'd say the first four guys are obviously roster locks, and I would even consider Bo Melton one, but, you know, say if the Packers want to keep seven wide receivers, you know, Grant DeBose could definitely be that seventh guy, a seventh round draft pick last year out of Charlotte. I did a tape review on him. You know, he's a talented wide receiver. And if he got lighter and faster, man, he could he could definitely, you know, start to pop off in, in this year's offseason activities. Here we have a clip of both Jair Alexander and Xavier McKinney doing a defensive back drill where they attack and try to strip the ball out of a ball carrier. They're both at practice, and these are voluntary. Remember, guys, OTAs are voluntary, and we know the whole thing that happened with Jair uh, for the last couple of years where anything that was voluntary, he really didn't show up to. He seems like he has an entirely different mentality with this new defense, with Jeff Halfley, all this new defensive staff. It seemed like he was just tired of the Joe Barry system, and, and I don't blame him. So now that we have a new system, and we kind of went over that, issue with him last year where we had to suspend him. It seems like Jair is reacting to that wonderfully. And we also see, of course, Xavier McKinney for the first time in the green and gold this offseason. I'm so excited for him. I'm so excited for him in this defense. I think he's going to be doing a lot of this, attacking a ball carrier, maybe breaking the ball loose. He's going to have a lot of tackles in this defense because he is one of the best up and coming safeties in the NFL. He was one of the highest graded safeties last year overall. And I'm so excited for him in this defense. I don't think the Packers have had a, a as talented safety as him in, in a pretty long time. Here's another clip of both Jair and Xavier McKinney. I mean, these guys are going to be the two stars of the defensive backfield for sure. Cornerback one and safety one. Here's, you know, a backpedal drill. Then you break towards the ball and go up and snag it. And Xavier McKinney, man, I could see him definitely having a couple interception as well. He, lo he looks great out there. I mean, this dude looks built. <laughs> he looks fast. He can tackle. He can cover. He can pretty much do it all. He was the one free agent this entire offseason. I even made a video about it. Like, hey, the Packers need to go out at the start of free agency and get this guy. And they did. I'm actually very happy with, you know, this offseason overall because the things I predicted and wanted the Packers to do, they did, which is not usually what happens. So I'm so excited to see this all come to fruition and all these players start to work together and build up this defense and offense as well. Here's a video of Carrington Valentine and Kalen King seemingly doing a man coverage drill because you see uh, Valentine basically staring at Kalen King's hips the entire time, just trying to replicate the break, follow a said wide receiver on a route and see what you know breaks they're doing. And, and Carrington Valentine also looks more muscular here than he did last year. So it looks like he put on some good weight. Um, also nice to see Kalen King in the green and gold. Uh, I know he was, during, he was there during the rookie mini camp a little bit, but uh, he's a guy that, you know, under some circumstances, could get uh, some snaps, some defensive snaps next season. Say if Keisha Nixon doesn't perform well or gets hurt and they want to keep Javon Bullard back deep, you know, Kalen King could very well slot in at nickel corner. I think that's where he'd fit in at the NFL level is at nickel corner, and I think he was a great draft pick there in the seventh round. But then the other seventh rounder, Carrington Valentine, who had an awesome 2023 campaign for a seventh rounder, you know, right now it's his starting job to lose opposite Jair Alexander. I would say at this point on a depth chart, he's over Eric Stokes just because of the availability 
ability, right? And he's been very available lately, and he had a good season, a good building block season in 2023. So I'm excited for his 2024 season, his sophomore year. So I'm going to play this clip with sound because it's linebacker coach Anthony Campanile, is uh, their new linebacker coach, uh, coaching up both Edron Cooper and uh, Tyron Hopp here on this sled drill. And man, he's intense, and that's exactly what you want with a linebacker coach. So I'm going to let this play uh, with just the sound on for right now. Talk. Man, you you love to see that. Like, you want that aggression with a linebacker coach. I feel like that's something this defense was missing. And again, we don't see every practice. We don't see all these coaches, what they're doing. But this just seems different. And this seems better. More aggression. More energy in this defense just run and hit and that's exactly what the Packers wanted to add to this defense this offseason just players that can run and hit they talked about it pretty much out of every player they drafted um, in this draft class they can simply run and hit and that is true and that's you know very true for both Adrian Cooper and Tyron Hopper two new linebackers in this in this room so those are all the highlights I have from the first OTA for the Green Bay Packers of 2024. As I said, I'll be making a video as well, going over the important notes from 7v7s and also 11v11s, which are actually going on right now as I speak. And further OTAs that happen this week, next week, all the ones that are open to the media and we get highlights, we get clips, we get notes, that'll all be uploaded on this channel. So if you haven't already, definitely go down and click subscribe. But I appreciate you guys coming by to the channel. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, Go Pack Go!